Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be describing a camera which has become really popular uh, at my Etsy and eBay stores recently and that is the Olympus Pin D uh, half frame film camera. I'm making this video as a guide to those who have bought the camera and might need some help uh, figuring out how it works and also for those who are interested in maybe trying out 35mm photography and who uh, want to know how these camera wor cameras work and might be interested in a Pin D. So the Olympus Pin D is an evolved and improved version of the original Olympus Pin and Pin S half frame cameras. Uh, most of the camera looks about the same as the earlier cameras. It has the same chassis, it has the same dimensions, uh, about the same weight. Uh, from a distance it looks like the same camera. But when you look closer you can see the improvements. Uh, the first and most obvious improvement is the addition of a selenium light meter. Uh, the second is a much larger, uh, much more sophisticated and much faster uh, 3.2 centimeter f1.9 lens. And next is an improved shutter with an extra stop of shutter speed, which allows you to take advantage of the faster lens. I'll go ahead and describe the controls and functions of the camera. Uh, first we have the film rewind knob. Uh, we have the uh, light meter. We have the shutter release button, which it has a hole where you can thread a standard cable release. Here we have the film counter dial. On the front, uh, the camera works more like a rangefinder camera than the original uh, pin cameras. It has, like a rangefinder, it has the shutter speed and uh, aperture rings uh, located on the lens barrel, one behind the other. Uh, here we have the focusing tab. And on the side here, we have the socket to attach a flash sync cord. On the bottom here, we have a release to uh, allow you to rewind the film a tripod socket, and then we have the uh, latch which allows you to remove the film back. Uh, using the camera is quite easy. Uh, the first thing you have to do is load a roll of film. So to do that, you pull down and turn this lock uh, to the left, and then you slide off the film back. Uh, once the film back is off, you insert your film canister here and push it up so that it engages in the forks of the film rewind knob. You pull the film over the film chamber here and thread it into the slot here on the take-up spool. And uh, wind the film and press the shutter a couple of times to wind it across. And make sure that the film engages uh, the winding shaft on both sides and that the holes on the film are lined up with the splines on the shaft. Uh, once the film is set in, you take the back and don't slide it up from the bottom like this because that might damage the film. Place it on the back uh, near the top, press it down firmly, and then pull it upwards. And then lock it in place by turning the latch clockwise and folding it up. And then, uh, once the film is loaded, uh, cycle the shutter about three times. And then you have to set the uh, film counter dial. Uh, this doesn't reset automatically like on other cameras. You have to set this manually. So uh, this camera uses 35 millimeter film and you have to determine how many exposures are in the film uh, to set the film counter. If you're using an ordinary 36 exposure roll of film, uh, push this, push the dial down and turn it until the pointer lines up on 72. And that, because you will get 72 uh, exposures from a 36 millimeter exposure uh, roll of film in the half frame format. If you are using a 24 exposure uh, roll of film, then set it to around 50. I find I usually get about four extra exposures in a half frame camera. If I set it, if I get a 36 exposure roll of film, instead of 72 exposures, I usually get around 76. So once you have the film inside the camera and you have the film counter reset, uh, then you have to set the camera to take a photo. What you do is you point the camera at the subject and then you take a, a meter reading from your light meter. Uh, the red needle will line up with a number, an EV number on the right side. And once you see the number here, you take a look at the chrome ring, the shutter speed ring on the front of the lens. There's a small window on the top. What you do is, by turning the shutter and aperture rings, you bring up the number which is shown uh, on your light meter. 
And once the number is showing in the window here, uh, your EV uh, settings are complete and the exposure is correct and you're ready to shoot. Now, an interesting thing about the EV system on this camera is once you set the EV setting, uh, you can turn both rings together and the EV setting will remain constant. So as you uh, turn the shutter and aperture rings, uh, the shutter speed will either get slower and the aperture uh, opens up or, or excuse me, and the aperture closes down, or as you turn the shutter speed faster, the aperture opens up. So you can automatically change depth of field effects and all that without fumbling too much. All you have to do is turn both rings together one direction or the other. Once you have the uh, correct setting you like and uh, for the effect you want, either shallow depth of field or uh, deep depth of field, uh, then you have to focus. Now the, uh, the pin is a scale focus camera. It's not a rangefinder camera. So what you have to do is you push the focusing tab until uh, it, it matches the distance on the lens barrel as the distance between you and the subject you're shooting at. Uh, you don't have to be especially accurate with this. There are a couple of uh, uh, red numbers here which are kind of uh, guidelines for quick things. For example, a portrait, a standing person, or infinity. You can actually use these cameras much more quickly than a, an SLR or a rangefinder camera simply by presetting uh, the focus to what you plan to shoot at, the focusing range you plan to shoot at. So uh, if I want to focus at a distance where I'm going to be catching people standing up, I preset the focus to that distance, and then whenever something is within that range of focus, I can shoot, and I don't have to do anything other than wind the camera and push the shutter button. It it's really quite an easy and fast uh, camera to shoot. Uh, once you have uh, taken all of the uh, exposure or used up the film, uh, then you uh, push in the button on the bottom, and then... Uh, rewind the film and uh, you can get the film uh, uh, developed pretty much any place where you get the uh, film developed I, I do it myself at home it's not that difficult of a thing to do for a monochrome film and it, it delivers really good results uh, I really love shooting with the uh, uh, half frame cameras and when I get the negatives back and I scan them at home with just a, a flat bed scanner, but even with a, a simple flat uh, bed scanner without a whole lot of resolution, I get really, really good uh, digital images, which I can share on the internet. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I, I like the format. I love how fast and easy these cameras are to use. Surprisingly, uh, these became quite popular uh, with press photographers uh, when they were introduced. And press photographers who, I guess you would say like uh, maybe investigative journalism, where they wanted to be able to shoot pictures of people or in places where uh, a professional photographer might not be allowed to get into so easily. Uh, a newspaper photographer might you know, get uh, whacked by the, the Yakuza or something if he were taking photos with them with uh, a 35 millimeter SLR camera. Whereas uh, with a camera like this, which looks like a camera which uh, ordinary people use, you know, tourists and such at the time, uh, uh, there wasn't as much danger. And the results these cameras uh, could provide was, was quite amazing. Anyway, uh, that's it for my uh, overview of the Olympus uh, Pin D half frame camera. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, if you want to see more videos about vintage Japanese cameras, uh, please subscribe. And if you're interested in buying a vintage Japanese uh, camera, please check the description below the video for links to my Etsy and eBay stores. All right, thanks a lot.